Welcome to Ask the Expert on AKC-TV, where we bring you the top experts on dog health, training, grooming, and more. You ask it and we will answer it. I'm Marissa Sarbeck. Thank you for joining us today. In today's topic, nothing is more painful than an ear infection. So to spare your dog that discomfort, we turn to our AKC Chief Veterinary Officer, Dr. Jerry Klein. Dr. Klein has been an emergency and critical care veterinarian for over 35 years, and we absolutely love having him here in studio. And we also have with us today Lila, a 10-year-old American black cocker spaniel, to show us how to keep those ears squeaky clean. So Dr. Klein, thanks for joining us. Welcome, I love to be here. Yes, and we wanna remind everybody, if you are joining us on Facebook, and this is your first time watching the show, Dr. Klein loves answering questions, and it's very simple. So just go to facebook.com slash American Kennel Club and comment on this video. We are talking about ear care, but Dr. Klein can handle any of those health questions, so don't be shy. So Dr. Klein, first wanna start by talking about what is a healthy ear, what does it look like? The most basic thing about a healthy ear is that it's not really noticed. Um, you're, you're not going to smell anything unusual. You're not going to notice your dog scratching excessively or shaking his head. And so really, all things being equal, when things are perfect and balanced, you just don't notice it. But you know, when something is wrong, your dog is more than likely to show some kind of actions. And we're very lucky, and the world is lucky, and nature is lucky, in that things like eyes and ears have pairs. They, are, they're, they should be symmetrical. And so when you look at your dog's face, your beautiful face, and look at their eyes, you really look at their eyes and notice that there's a difference in the pupils and the color and things. When you look at their ears, take an extra second and look inside the ears and see what they look like. See what they look like when your dog is acting perfectly normal. It should be fairly light pink. It should, be, it should smell kind of fresh. Uh, not musty. So, so if you know what normal is, you'll be a lot more adept at picking out if something seems like it's not normal or abnormal. And what would abnormal look like in an unhealthy ear? The most common signs is there will be some form of ir uh, irritation or inflammation. In, in other words, the ear, ear canal will be uh, inflamed or reddened. It'll be irritated. And so the dog will be showing some kinds of discomfort. He'll be scratching at his ear or also shaking his head a lot. And I think that's the signs that uh, people bring dogs in too because they notice their dogs excessively shaking their head or shake, uh, scratching at their ears. And if that happens, the owner should at least take a peek at that one ear or better, take a look at both ears and see if it's both ears are affected or if it's just one. So we really are seeing, like everybody thinks your dogs aren't talking to you and telling you what's wrong, but they, they kind of are. We just have to learn their language and they're pretty simple to understand. We just have to take the time to understand and they're telling us something. You know, we live with them on a day by day basis and they're closest to us, we're closest to them. So when we feel or know something doesn't seem right, our job is to act on it. And how often would you say we should be acting on it and looking inside those dog's ears? Well, I think ideally at least once a week. Now, I think there are certain breeds that go to a grooming shop and the groomer themselves, as part of a good grooming establishment, will check the ears and the anal glands and, and the, the tail, uh, the, under the tail and the nails. And then some dogs go to the vet once a year. But I think that, we, you know, to look at a dog, you shouldn't have to wait for a once a year exam by a veterinarian. And if your dog is not the type of breed that goes to a groomer on a regular basis, or even if it does go to a groomer, it still doesn't mean that you shouldn't look inside a dog's ears. Because if a dog goes to a groomer, let's say once every two to three months, you don't want to wait that long. You know, just take a peek once a week and just see what it looks like. And if it looks okay, that's fine. You know, and you can do that in the process of just you know, petting him on the, on the sofa while you're watching TV. Are there any preventative measures we should be taking when you're looking at those dog's ears, trying to keep them clean? Well, I think prevention is always the best possible way, better and easier than a cure. Uh, we do know that ears are susceptible to infection when they get moist or wet. Uh, I think in certain parts of the country, uh, when it's hot, humid weather, we tend to see more ear infections. And it's also secondary to moisture accumulation in the ear canal. Uh, so it's after baths or if they go swimming. So a couple of things. Uh, if, if they go swimming, you should dry the ear canals really thoroughly after each swim. And then check the ears a couple of days afterwards just to make sure that they are, in fact, still so clear and clean. And for baths, if you're gonna bathe your dog yourself, 
you should try to make sure the ear canal stays dry. And the easiest thing to do is get one of those jumbo cotton balls or a mo moderate sized cotton ball, depending on the size of the dog, and just s stuff it inside the ear canal. Uh, uh, enough so the water can't get in, but easy enough that you can easily grab it out. So during the process of the bath, as you're trying to bathe and lather the face and you know, the, the skull and everything else and then rinse, because we have to rinse thoroughly and dogs always shake, you know, <laughs> make sure that the cotton ball hasn't been shaken out because if it is, you've got to replace it. And, and make sure that after the bath, then you clean the ear with a dry cotton ball and then it stays nice, clean and fresh. And then again, check the ear a few days afterwards just to make you didn't fail a little bit and the ear still looks good. All right, Dr. Klein, we also have our first Facebook question in. So Sandy says, my five-year-old German Shepherd dog has an ear infection now. I took him to the vet on Friday of last week. How long before he feels better? He doesn't seem to be responding yet. Well, there's a couple reasons why a dog can have an ear infection. Uh, there's bacteria, there are fungal infections, there are parasitic like mites. There can be foreign material inside an ear, uh, things like sand or dirt. Uh, even uh, plant material, I think in California, things like foxtails. So it, it, the fact that it's just one ear makes me wonder if it's just some form of either bacterial or fungal infection. Most medications that a veterinarian will give you, hopefully they have done a cytology or a little smear to detect what it is that's causing the ear infection, if it's fungus or bacteria or sometimes both. And they tend to give medication that treats all of them with a little bit of an anti-inflammatory because that relieve, alleviates some of the itchiness and the, uh, the burning sensation so your dog feels better. Uh, it should be used as directed, usually at least twice a day. Make sure you massage it in the ear canal properly. And depending on your vet's instruction, depending how bad the ear is, you should certainly have a follow-up after five to seven days you'd like to think there's some improvement at that time. And so if it's not improving, you should contact the veterinarian and say, what gives? Uh, I've been doing this, it's not better, it's something that I'm doing wrong, or is this the wrong medication, or wh what do we need to do next? So Sandy really should be seeing that relief with her dog in that first week. I think within three to five days, the general trend should be that things are better rather than worse uh, after a few days of treatment. If things get worse, then you may want to stop the treatment because there could be some kind of adverse response to a, one of the medications in the treatment and then have your vet reassess the ear. All right. Well, I do want to remind everybody we are taking those Facebook questions on. So if you go to the American Kennel Club's page, uh, go on and put those right below. But we're going to send Dr. Klein over right now for a demonstration with Lila, the American Black Cocker Spaniel, and her owner, Brenda. Thanks for joining us on set today, guys. Hi, Lila. <laughs> So she's a black American Cocker Spaniel, which is a breed that has long droopy ears. And they're one of the breeds that tend to have more ear problems because just by the conformation of the ear and the ear canal, it tends to have a fair amount of hair inside the ear canal. And then air circulation isn't as great as a dog like a German Shepherd that has the ears like that and the air circulates really well. So moisture can accumulate and then with that, certainly the uh, accumulation and development of yeast and or bacteria if she sh uh, shakes her head a lot or if she scratches her ears because the nails have bacteria. So Lila was lucky to have a perfect spa day yesterday, so she looks pretty darn clear. But what you want to do is just, this is called the pinna of the ear. Hello, Lila. The pinna is the external uh, aspect of the ear canal. And the ear also has a horizontal canal and a, uh, a vertical canal and a horizontal canal, vertical first. So you should clean and look at what you can see. If you can't see, then you shouldn't go digging for it. That should be the vet's job. So the first thing you look at is to make sure that it's not red, and it's not. It looks nice and clean, and it smells fresh. So, so far, so good. And look at both ears. Now, if you have to clean a dog's ears, they may, and your dog has no infection, and your vet uh, has shown you uh, certain uh, criteria, you can do a certain thing. You can get certain uh, preparations that don't have medications, but basically are astringent type medications. And you just put a couple of drops inside the ear canal. And I say just a couple because you don't want to flood it too bad, too much right away. The dog has to get used to it. And then gently massage the ear canal. You kind of hear a little smushing sound. And then let the dog shake his head if it's going to. And then if not, just get a cotton ball 
and just gently wipe off any of the excess debris. And we're getting a little bit from that alone. And then just gently do it until it comes out pretty clean and fresh. You don't want to go digging. Good girl. I don't recommend using cotton swabs because the cotton swab, the cotton can get stuck inside the ear canal and the stick itself can be traumatic. I do like cotton balls. Just make sure you remember to take them out, especially during a bath. And I think generally that's, there she goes. And then look inside the ear again and just wipe out any excess because what that solution does, it helps to break down the cerumen or the wax. And so that'll help clear that all out. So if you do that, and I know she was just groomed yesterday, but that gives you a great handle on things. So just get in the habit of doing once a week that basic thing. It took, what, a minute? And there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thanks so much, Dr. Klein. That was a great demonstration. Now, we are taking those Facebook questions right now, so I do want to get the next one. Val says, my chow chow gets an ear infection during each shedding season. It was recommended that I have them plucked before it starts. Will this actually help? His ears are always clean and he gets groomed fully once a week. Well, it's interesting because it says it happens during the shedding season. So the commonality word, is it shedding or is it season? Mm -hmm. Is that dog having seasonal allergies or is it because of the hair loss? I would tend to think either are possible. Certainly, if she clears the hair and the dog is still having problems, then I would look at the possibility that this is a reaction to a seasonal allergy, something in the environment. Uh, I have known dogs that have allergic reactions every April or May, and then again in the fall. So if this seems to be almost by the, by the calendar, by the month, then she should also talk to her veterinarian about the possibility that there could be an allergic component to this as well. Our next question is in from Barbara. She says, is there an over-the-counter ear treatment that can clean a dog's ear? There are several over-the-counter ear treatments, and I think that you can talk to your veterinarian about ones that they recommend. Uh, the ones, if your dog has an infection, bacterial or yeast or parasitic, then it will require certain uh, vet, uh, prescription drugs that can be only obtained through a veterinarian. But there are many, like the one that I just used, that are available uh, and bought without having to have a veterinarian's prescription. Uh, I am a little bit against certain essential oils because I think if they're not used properly, they can be irritating, uh, cause a problem to be worse, and at worst case scenarios, they can be toxic and very, very irritating. So I think you have to be careful what you do. There are home remedies out there on Google and everything else. I dissuade people from doing that without really talking it over with their veterinarian first. The general rule of thumb is you want to keep ears as clean and dry as possible. So things that contain water are things that are generally not going to be in a dog's favor for keeping a dog's ear and dry, clean and dry. Allison has our next question. She says, my dog gets ear infections a lot and they will bleed. The vet has to flush them and put her on antibiotics. Is there anything I can do? She now doesn't want me to touch her ears. Well, I think whenever you have a dog that has an ear infection or has a problem, the first couple of days of treatment are the most challenging because having to apply medication in a dog's ears every eight hours for three days in a row uh, when the dog's ears are at its most painful is really difficult, which is why you have to tread very lightly. Uh, even though some of these medications may have anti-inflammatories in it or, or uh, uh, topical uh, anesthetics to try to make the ear feel better, the, ear, the dog doesn't know that. So you have to you know, tread very lightly, but still be diligent. And hopefully by the third, fourth, or fifth day, those ears should feel better. So applying the medication should be better. However, when you have chronic issues, and if it's in both ears, then we have to look at other causes of why this dog is having chronic ear infections. And there, that's when a workup has to be done. And she should talk to her veterinarian about that. Uh, culture and sensitivity, sometimes when they do swabs, submit them to a, uh, a laboratory to know what type of material is causing it. And also something, if it's resistant to certain antibiotics or not. So that can give you a much better answer. And then look at the environment as well. Is there something in the environment that's tipping it off? What kind of food are you feeding it? So a workup entails a complete history and additional diagnostic tools. 
All right. I do want to remind everybody that we are taking questions on Facebook. So if you have a question about your dog, Dr. Klein is here answering them. All ear care questions are welcome. Uh, also, Dr. Klein, just wondering, do different breeds require different ear care cleaning process? I know we're looking at Lila, or we just looked at Lila, who has those, those floppy ears that a Cocker Spaniel will have. I mean, is that different from cleaning a German Shepherd dog's ears, anything like that? Well, I think certain breeds have very hairy ears. They must be Jewish because, <laughs> uh, but I think uh, certain schnauzers uh, have very hairy ears. And d dogs with a lot of hair in the ear canal or small ear canals, they tend to have less air circulation. So ideally, the hair should be gently plucked. And that is usually done by either the veterinarian or the groomer. And it allows better air circulation, better assessment of the ear canal, and also better application of any medications or treatment uh, as can be done. Uh, if you try to do this yourself, uh, you should be taught how to do it properly because it can be painful. One thing I do want to say that people can also cause more damage being overzealous cleaning the ears too often. If you clean a dog's ears every day, you're disrupting the natural flora of an ear canal. And that can cause just as much irritation and problems than doing it not at all. So there's a balance like everything else. So I think cleaning the dog's ears once a week, as long as the ears are healthy, should be plenty of time to do it. And maybe even every other, year, other week if the ears are okay. But I don't think every dog needs to have their ears cleaned every day. Right. Our next question is in. Shelly says, my dog is a husky, has valley fever and epilepsy. Is there a better alternative medications than she's using a couple there on the screen? Well, I think she has, her dog has, unfortunately, some system, very serious systemic uh, conditions going on that are first and foremost uh, have to be treated because of the health of the dog. Uh, a, fung a systemic fungal infection, uh, and phenobarbital, and some dogs can become sensitive to phenobarbital and have uh, responses to that. Uh, I think I would start with the mild, depending what the ear is and what the cytology yields, that would be a good case to try to have that be leading you towards the appropriate treatment. I would try to go maybe with treatments that have aloe or aloe vera as a base to be gentle and non-toxic, uh, to try to keep them clean and dry as much as possible, and to work with either her veterinarian or her infectious uh, doctor, or, and then maybe work, uh, in conjunction work with a veterinary dermatologist as well. Now, Catherine is uh, commenting also, apple cider vinegar works very well if it is a yeast infection. Is that true? What it does, it tends to alter the pH of the ear. Uh, and there are home remedies of using a dilution of apple cider vinegar with water. And as I mentioned before, as long as there's no problem as far as other infections with the eardrum or anything else, it can be used cautiously, but making sure that it's dried completely and it doesn't cause pain and problems when it's applied. So I think that pure apple cider vinegar is too much. I think it should be diluted with some saline uh, and then dried thoroughly. And that could be used as a maintenance, but it should be in its proper proportion. Really anything else we should keep in mind in terms of preventative measures of before your dog has an ear problem, what else? I think it's really the basic thing is just keep a look at them, make sure they look fresh and clean, that they're not full of hair, that they don't have any crusty debris on it, they're not uh, ill-colored uh, and they smell fairly normal. I mean the basics, you know, use our senses and common sense and hopefully that'll help get them on start. All right, we're going to take our last Facebook question right now from Rhonda. She says, my dog has a skin tag down in the ear canal. She gets a lot of earwax buildup. I try to clean once a week and will try the cider vinegar water mixture. She says, I have been using just regular vinegar and water. Well, skin tags are one of those things that can cause accumulation of debris in an ear canal. And some ear tags can develop to be masses, and we never take them too lightly if they're an ear canal. So if it's causing a lot of problems, she might want to talk to her veterinarian about possibly having that removed and biopsied. Uh, it, depending on the size, depending on the state of the dog and everything else, and the costs involved, granted. But anything around the face, oral cavity, is usually recommended if it's causing some form of an issue to have it removed and submitted for biopsy for accurate diagnosis. And so that would be at least a conversation that she should have with her veterinarian.
All right, Dr. Klein, before we head out for the day, is there anything else we should touch on with ear care, preventative measures, when to take your dog to the vet? I think a general rule of thumb, if both ears are affected, look at the systemic response, uh, the environment, an allergy, the food. If it's just one ear, look at trauma, infection, things like that. Uh, not that one can't be the other, but a, a thorough ear exam should always involve both ears, the good ear and the bad ear. Hopefully, the both, one, at least one is a good ear. Mm -hmm. Or to see, it'll give you an idea of where to steer you towards diagnosis as well. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Klein. Always happy to have you with us. Thank you. All right. And thank you to Brenda and Lila for coming out today as well and being our demonstration. Well, that's all for today. I'm Marissa Sarbach. Thank you so much for joining us. Next week on Ask the Expert on AKC TV, we will have a very important guest on our show, dog trainer and family dog magazine contributor, Kathy Santo, for one of my favorite topics of the year, puppy training. Kathy and her students have won over 500 obedience, agility, and canine good citizenship titles. Now she can answer anything that you throw at her, so get those questions ready, remember, on Facebook. Also tune in every Tuesday and Friday at noon to AKC Dog Center, where we bring you the latest dog news from the American Kennel Club. Be sure to download AKC TV on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We love chatting with you on social media. AKC TV, sit, stay, watch.